Destiny is probably my favorite event that I've done all year. And I'm really surprised to hear myself say that because I just did UPW two weeks beforehand in Dallas and I did not enjoy that live event, but Date with Destiny was so much better. I loved how you got to really break down every single area of your life. So before you were just kind of like, learning through trial and error. You're like, this is what I feel when this happens. So I'm gonna make this choice and that one. And you kind of have this haphazard decision tree where you're just like, I'm going through life from experience to experience. And with Date With Destiny, you actually outline all of your personal values, your present values, your new values, the values that you wanna to work towards, the values that you wanna work away from. So you have two lists and then you use this as your new decision tree and you create a whole new roadmap for all the areas of your life and then rewrite the script for all of these areas to create your new destiny. So I love the event. It was something that Tony Robbins said. He was like, if you enjoy this event, you're probably an overachiever, which is not wrong. So what is Day With Destiny? I honestly had no idea before doing this event what in the world it was about. A lot of people asked me, they're like, well, if it has the word date in it, do you have to bring a date to the event? Like, do you have to be in a relationship? And I was like, I don't think so, because they sold me a single ticket, right? I, I didn't, they didn't give me instructions to bring somebody. So it was like, I think you can just go by yourself. But I honestly had no earthly idea what this event was about. Like I had multiple people tell me that this was one of their favorite events that they did, that this was definitely something worth signing up for, that this was Tony Robbins' favorite event that he hosts. The salesperson who sold me the ticket on the Tony team, he was like telling me that people will save up money their whole entire lives to go to Date With Destiny, that people will sell their cars just so they can get the money to buy a ticket to Date With Destiny. And I'm like, why? I, I didn't get it, you know, like, what is it? How are you even able to attract this kind of audience to this event when like, I don't even understand what it does. And um, so anyways, I'm really glad I bought a ticket to this event. I absolutely understand why now people will sell their cars to go and get a ticket to Day with Destiny because you really do learn so, so much. You take the six human needs, then you break down every single aspect of those needs, all the rules that you constructed for why you need those needs, and then you rewrite the script for everything. You rewrite all your rules, you rewrite all your values, you reconstruct a new you, you make a new roadmap. And I also really appreciate that they have a relationship day, which is maybe why people thought I had to bring a date to the event, but you definitely don't have to bring a date. A lot of the people there were single. You do have a relationship day where you do get to see couples uh, talk about their relationship dynamics, but also you get to hear from people who are not in relationships and you get to hear their stories about what has maybe kept them from being able to step into a new relationship. And so there's a relationship day. You do learn about masculine and feminine polarities and how there is that polarity that has to exist for attraction, even if it is a gender non-binary relationship, even if it's uh, a non-heterosexual relationship that there is still this polarity that creates the attraction and just learning the differences between how the masculine and the feminine view the world, how the masculine and feminine respond to situations in the world. I think that was very eye-opening. So the good, I really enjoyed the diversity of the experience at Date With Destiny. It wasn't just you sitting and taking notes and jumping around and dancing. We also had meditations. We also had chanting with some of those meditations. We had feminine embodiment exercises, masculine embodiment exercises. We kind of had like a little bit of arts and crafts going on because we had posters and markers and different activities. They broke us up into teams. So there was some of that team spirit with it. We had competitions. We like have teams scream and see which team could scream the loudest. And so it was, it was really fun. It kind of felt like an adult field day, really. That's how it felt. And I enjoyed that a lot. So I thought the way that they organized this event was fantastic. It was way better than UPW. There, there were, there's still lines, but 
I think the worst line I stood in was like 20 minutes. And then on the days when we didn't get snack or meal breaks, which is a common thing at Tony Robbins events, they actually provided snacks, which I super appreciate because then we didn't have to miss the content to go stand in line to go get food from the food court. We could actually just stay in our seats, continue to learn, and they're supporting us in doing that by providing snacks. So I super appreciate all that. I think all the frustrations that I had at UPW did not exist here with Date With Destiny. So I really applaud them for doing such a great job with it. But honestly, I think it might have been because the tickets to Date With Destiny were like $7,000 maybe even eight, I don't know. I bought my ticket months ago, so I can't quite remember what I paid. And the tickets for UPW, the general mission was only $700. So these tickets were 10X the price of a UPW ticket. So maybe that's why they, they organized it a lot better and they were able to provide snacks. And so I just felt like overall, they treated us a lot better at Date With Destiny. Whereas at UPW, I felt like they were definitely hurting us like cattle. Also enjoyed how they incorporated so many different facets of your life into this one program. So it wasn't like UPW where you're just focused on your goals. Here you have your goals for your personal life, for your health, for your relationships, for your career. And then you have your different sets of values for each of those departments and categories. And then we learned about relationship dynamics. And then we learned about how we were going to set one year goals, three year goals, five year goals, big community goals, personal goals. There were just so many different areas that this program touched on. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like if you really want to dive deep into everything, this would be the event to do that. And I, I really thoroughly enjoyed it so much. I'm really happy that I had the opportunity to go to Date With Destiny Live. I also really, really enjoyed Sage Robbins, Tony Robbins' wife being there. I think she's amazing. Everything she had to say was just so beautiful. And she always spoke from a place of love. If she were to host an event and she did a, a Sage Robbins event, I would 100% buy a ticket to go see her because I think she's fantastic and I would love to learn more from her. But it, it was really, really beautiful to just learn from both of them and through their relationship. And I appreciate how open and honest they were about their relationship. And really through this event, you, you feel like you get to know Tony Robbins on a human level. I do also feel like the community at Date With Destiny, it was a really high achieving community. Granted, Tony Robbins did tell us that this was like the overachievers event and that if you were here at Date With Destiny and you enjoyed Date With Destiny, you were probably an overachiever. So that could be why. But I really met some incredible people um, and I felt like this group was a lot more motivated. Uh, UPW is kind of like a mixed pot. You get like a little bit of everything. I felt like there were some people who were really hard on themselves, who were really down on themselves, who were in difficult situations. Where I just felt like at Date With Destiny, everybody was just ready to go to that next level. It wasn't necessarily because of personal pain or hardship that people came to Date With Destiny. I think there were a lot of people who were also there because they had great, wonderful lives and they just wanted to know what was next. So the bad. One thing that is just a truism for all of Tony Robbins' events is that they're high intensity. So you're gonna have long days, they're 12 to 14 hour days. I think for this event, the earliest we got to go home and sleep was at 1.30. I think most other nights it was two. One night we went past three. So just be prepared for that. That was something at the airport. I met this guy who had done three date with Destiny. Then he was like, uh, my advice to you is to just be mentally prepared for not eating much this week and not sleeping much this week. That was his advice to me. And so I'm actually gonna add on to that and say that you're also going to lose your voice. If you're playing full out, you're gonna lose your voice. Like so many people on my team had no voice at all. They didn't just like have a sore throat or had a hard time. They, they had literally no voice. They could not talk at all because their voice was just completely gone. And if you're playing full out, you're shouting, you're doing the exercise, you're integrating your values, you're gonna lose your voice. I lost my voice by the end of the event. I was like very, very raspy, could barely talk afterwards but it's 100% worth it. And if you're gonna do it, you have to play full out. Like you have to get to that point. And you're also gonna have shin splints. That was something for me. I was surprised that I got shin splints because I'm pretty athletic. Like I work out every single day and I was wearing my running shoes. I was wearing good shoes. But by day three, my legs were starting to hurt. And I was like, maybe I shouldn't be jumping around so much anymore because I'm feeling the impact in my joints. And I was like, all right, well, now I'm gonna just try to keep my feet planted and just dance around with my feet planted and not jump up and down like I was. But still by the end of the week, even with me not jumping anymore, I still had shin splints. So just heads up, that might happen to you. Uh, if you're playing full out and you're putting in that energy and that intensity, you might go home with some shin splints or pain in your legs. So you might wanna book a massage or a foot massage or something and just have that ready for yourself. Um, a lot of people also afterwards told me about the date with Destiny Flu, which 
I didn't get, I felt great afterwards. I was like, yeah, like I didn't really have much of a voice. So I did have to rest my voice afterwards, but I felt fantastic. But a lot of people did tell me that this is a real thing, that there is a date with Destiny Flu and a lot of people get very sick after the event, which doesn't surprise me because if you're not sleeping right, you're not eating right, you're in a freezing cold room and you're jumping up and down, your adrenals are probably gonna be shot after a week of doing that. But that is something to just be aware of and maybe prepare for three or four days after the event to recover and to really like recuperate your energy and also to just integrate everything that you learned from the program. So that is something that I would recommend doing. And then the only other thing is like, there were still some moments at the event and I felt the exact same way at UPW where I was just like cringing because of the way that Tony was interacting with some of the people who were volunteering their stories. Um, with Date With Destiny, he did a lot more interventions than he did at UPW, which is also understandable because you go much deeper with this event and we had more days. But with the interventions, and I think maybe because he went deeper with people on the interventions, there were a lot of moments where I was just like cringing in my seat because he was saying certain things to people that I just felt uncomfortable even listening to. And I, I know that's something that's very subjective because everybody's comfort level is different, but it, it wasn't just me feeling this way. There were people, there were guys actually, who were sitting behind me who were saying things like, man, Tony needs to lay off of this woman. Like he needs to take it easy on her. Like there were a lot of us who were feeling really uncomfortable. And the irony of all this was like at one part of the intervention, Tony actually stopped talking. And then he asked the audience, he goes, am I being too mean to her right now? And everybody on my side of the room screamed, yes. It was like, he could read our minds. He was like, he sensed that energy in the room that we felt like he was being really mean at that moment. And then he asked us and we were like, yes, you absolutely are. But we were on the very far back left side of the room and he was all the way at the front of the stage towards the right. So there was like no way he heard us. But that was the overwhelming response from my side of the room was that, yes, you were definitely being very mean to this woman during the intervention. And I feel like it's because the people in the interventions, they were put in such an uncomfortable place where they probably felt embarrassed or humiliated in front of their peers. And that's why they kept arguing with Tony and they kept coming back and trying to defend themselves and make themselves look better or changing parts of their story or trying to villainize other people in their story. And I think it's because they were put in such a defensive place where they're like, I don't feel good. I feel embarrassed. And the only thing I can do to protect myself in this situation is to fight back and keep arguing with Tony. And that's why some of these interventions literally went on for like an hour, two hours, and he wasn't getting through to them not because these people weren't able to see the consequences of their own actions. I personally feel like they were able to clearly see that, but they were unwilling to admit it because they were already feeling so bad in that moment that their only way to survive that experience to really protect themselves was to fight back and continue to argue with Tony. I just don't know if that's something he's really aware of. I feel like because Tony Robbins is a tough guy and he's really tough on himself and he's tough on others, that that's just kind of how he naturally interacts with people during intervention. So he feels comfortable being hard on other people because how you treat yourself is how you treat others. But for bystanders like myself at the event who were listening in on these interventions, I felt really uncomfortable. You know, I got to a point where I was like, I would never let somebody talk to me in this way. So to witness somebody being spoken to in this manner in front of 5,000 people, because it's a live event, there's so many people watching you share your story, you're extremely vulnerable. and. There were things that Tony was saying that were critical, judgmental, and you know, I thought it was really funny too because he kept saying, he probably said it like three times during the event, he was like, oh, I'm not judging you. I'm not being judgmental. Um, yeah, you are, Tony. You are super judgmental when you're doing your interventions. You definitely judge people. You insult them. You mock them, making fun of them, saying things like you're going to be single for the next 10 years, telling them that they stopped maturing when they were eight years old and they basically have arrested development and they're acting like a child, even though they're an adult's body. Like. I would never let somebody talk to me like that. There was actually one point, and I still remember this because to me it was just so shocking that he didn't seem to have awareness of how judgmental he was. But someone said something and then he literally, and I quote because he verbatim said this word for word, he goes, that's the stupidest fucking shit I've ever heard in my life. And then right after he said that, he goes, but I'm not judging you. I'm not being judgmental. Yeah, you are. You're definitely being judgmental. You can't say that something is the stupidest fucking shit you've ever heard in your life and not have that sentence imply judgment. There's there's obviously judgment built into that, bro. Like you're being judgmental. And I personally feel like that's why these interventions ran so long and we didn't go home until three o'clock in the morning. And that day we actually had to cut parts out of the program. He was like, oh, we don't have time to go over this topic because we ran out of time or we, we have to skip over this exercise because otherwise you guys won't be able to sleep tonight. So that's just my personal opinion. And this is something like, I think universally people always forget is that kindness is free. 
tried this is completely free and it's something that very few people remember to use when speaking with other people because kindness is really the universal language of love and everybody understands things from love with more clarity than they can understand things from a place of judgment or criticism because when you speak to someone else with love and kindness you're giving them permission to speak to themselves with love and kindness and when people can do that and learn to really love themselves and offer compassion to themselves, then they're much more willing to recognize the consequences of their own actions, admit their faults, and allow themselves to grow because they feel nurtured enough in that moment to do so. But if they don't feel nurtured, then they go on the defensive and they start trying to make themselves look good and they start trying to defend their pride and they start trying to change the story and argue and do all these things that drag out. And then none of us get to go to sleep until like three o'clock in the morning because of this long drawn out intervention. I don't really know, maybe there's a method to Tony's madness and there's a reason why he has to push people to that point. I don't know, but personally, just from the outside looking in, I felt like a lot more kindness could have been used. That's just my personal feedback. Of course, not everyone felt this way. There's someone else that I talked to in the crowd and they were like, oh, I feel like they needed to hear it like that. They needed to have someone be really hard on them. But I mean, I, I personally, I don't know if I agree with that statement because I don't talk to myself like that. And I feel like I get great results in life because I don't talk to myself like that. Packing, what would I pack? So I would definitely pack warm clothes, even though the event is in West Palm Beach, Florida, and it's nice and sunny and hot outside, inside of that convention center, it is freezing cold. And so you're gonna wanna have a winter coat, uh, maybe even a scarf. I saw a lot of people wearing like warm beanie caps, people are wearing like extra socks, because it, it does really get cold in that room. So warm winter clothes, I would also recommend packing athletic gear, some running shoes, some maybe workout clothes, sweats, not because you're gonna be working out or anything because you're gonna be so tired at the event, you probably won't have the time or energy to do that. But because during the event, you're gonna be so active, you're gonna be jumping around, you're gonna be screaming. There was one day when we had to like walk around the entire neighborhood because that was part of our team exercise and you're like walking for a long time. So just comfortable shoes, comfortable clothing that you can be active in. And then I would also recommend uh, booking yourself a massage or maybe even bringing some Epsom salt so you can take an Epsom salt bath because your body will be in pain afterwards. You're gonna be sore if you're playing full out, that's gonna happen, it's just bound to happen. I would also maybe recommend bringing some throat lozenges because if you're gonna lose your voice and your throat's gonna be dry and raspy, you might wanna bring some of that stuff, some cough drops, some eucalyptus, just something to help soothe your throat. And then uh, I actually wouldn't recommend bringing snacks to this event because they provided snacks for you. So that was something I thought I was gonna need. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to pack all these snacks. It's gonna be like UBW again. No, they provided plenty of snacks. So I think on that front, you really didn't need to bring any more snacks. So those are my packing tips. I think really if you're just prepared to play all out, you're gonna have a great experience. And even if you don't pack some of these things, you'll be fine. Would I do this event again? Yes, absolutely. I actually already bought my ticket for next year's date with Destiny, so I'm already signed up to do this again next year. That's how much I enjoyed it. I know it is a high cost ticket, but it's absolutely worth it. You're gonna level up so many areas of your life, your relationships, your relationship with yourself, your relationship with others, romantic relationships, your business, your career, your goals, like everything is gonna level up after this event. So I definitely recommend it. It's one of my favorite events that I've done all year and I've, I've taken this whole year out of my life just to do self-development events. So I highly, highly recommend it. It's fantastic. Thank you again for watching this video. If you want to follow along with my self-development journey, I've been going to tons of events, uh, meditation retreats, seminars, workshops. So if you want to learn more or if you just want to follow along with my journey, please subscribe to my channel. If there are any questions that you have about this event that I didn't answer, I'm happy to answer any of your questions in the comments below. If you felt like you got value out of this video, uh, I appreciate a thumbs up. If you like it, it'll help other people find this video and be able to learn about this event too.